OK. So we've, um, we've got our rational expression here. We talked about how to factor, simplify, determine domain, if we're thinking of it as a function. Um, there are two different things that can go wrong as far as, as points that are left out of the domain in a rational expression or function like this. OK. Um, this zero here, right? There was a zero in the denominator, but I canceled it with a zero in the numerator, and now it's gone. There's no longer, right? So once I simplify, there's no longer a zero in the denominator when x equals zero. Um, these sort of zeros in the denominator that you can cancel, these produce just simply a hole in the graph, if you're thinking about the graph of your function, OK? Um, so you know, we have this zero over zero thing, but once you cancel it, right, now I could plug in x equals zero, and in fact, I get, well, it almost looks like an intercept, except it's not quite an intercept because it's a hole, okay? What about at two? Well, any zero in the denominator that does not cancel with a zero in the numerator, this produces what's called a vertical asymptote. Okay, so that's information that you can get out of the factored form for your rational expression as long as you keep track of the fact that, oh, there was that x that I canceled, right? We took, we kept track of that. As long as you made that note, you have this information. Um, the other thing that we know is that there is an x intercept, right? When x is equal to minus 1, y is equal to 0, right? So if we're, again, if we're thinking about graphing, we know that our graph crosses the y-axis, or crosses the x-axis, rather, at minus 1, okay? At 0, so Well, at 0, 0, we would have an intercept there. It would be both the x and the y intercept, except our original expression was not defined at 0, right? So instead of getting an intercept there, that's where we have this hole, OK? So we can get that information. There's one more piece of information that you can look for in a rational function, um, which is there's a second type of asymptote, right? Rational functions, they have both vertical and sometimes horizontal asymptotes, right? They don't always have vertical asymptotes because I could have like an irreducible quadratic in the, in the denominator, let's say, right? Something that has no zeros. That could happen. Um, this one does not have a horizontal asymptote. We'll do another example where, where there is one, and we'll talk about how the way you figure that out is you, you look up here. Um, so what you can do is you can also, again, you can ask about, well, what, what's the end behavior? What happens when the absolute value of x is big? So when the absolute value of x is big, our function behaves roughly like, well, what happens is when, x, when the absolute value of x is big enough, you can ignore the lower order terms. They're not so important. You keep the top degree terms on the top and the bottom. And so you have x cubed over 4x squared. And again, we're thinking big absolute value of x here. So we're away from 0, so we don't worry about the fact that this is undefined at 0. If we simplify, this is just x over 4, right? So that tells us that the graph of this thing, once x gets big enough, it's going to look more or less like just simply the line y equals x over 4, OK? Um, in general, when you want to know what's happening, you know, for large values of x, this is what you do, right? You just look at the top powers. Um, in this case, the degree of the polynomial in the numerator was greater than the degree of the polynomial in the denominator. Um, if the degree in the numerator is less than or equal to the one in the denominator, you're going to have a horizontal asymptote. So it doesn't happen here, but it will happen um, in other situations, okay? Um, so all of this is information that you can extract um, just by sort of looking at the function, right? Again, we haven't done any calculus, anything like that. All we did was, well, we did one estimate by thinking about what happens when x is really big, and we did a bit of factoring, okay? 
So we're going to take that information in the next video and we're going to see how to put all this together and get some rough idea of what the graph of this thing might look like.